Hello everyone. What you're looking at is a Texas Instruments Extensa 610 CD. If memory serves me correctly, this is a clone of some sort of Acer Extensa. Um, I, I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what these were modeled after and were sold as. Uh, they were just rebranded as TI. This one is in very good shape. It has just a couple minor issues, and I'll go over those in this video, but really, this one has made it through its life um, without too much of a problem when it comes to wear and tear. So let's take a look at the outside. We've got two card slots on here with the doors still intact, which is nice. On the front, not much to mention, just a latch. On this side, we have a disk drive, and I've never seen one of these personally, um, before. It's a disk drive that when you press the button, it actually ejects. And the laptop isn't on right now. Um, it's, it's an eject mechanism. And I've never seen another laptop that did this when it doesn't have power. So that's kind of cool. Back here is the power button. And here is the battery. Um, unfortunately, this one is missing the battery cover. And also, unfortunately, the battery, which is an aftermarket battery, is dead. Around the back, we have a DC jack. I'll tell you what the voltage is once we flip this thing over and look at it. We've got what I believe is a SCSI connector, as well as audio jacks on the back, under this rubberized flap. There's a PS2 port, and somewhat amazingly, this back door is still intact. The little latch there still works. And behind it we've got the usual assortment of ports that every laptop from the time period seems to have. On the bottom there's really not much to mention. There's a memory access door for upgrading the RAM. And if we take a quick look at the power, it takes a 19 volt 2.4 amp power adapter. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the keyboard area. Uh, as I said, this one has made it through life in a very good condition. Um, this, uh, the inside of this thing, really truly does look brand new. I'm not kidding you. It looks like it just came out of the factory. Not a scratch, not a sign of wear, anywhere on it. It is one of the best vintage laptops I've ever owned. Um, it's really incredible condition. The keyboard feels very nice. It has very nice travel. Um, it doesn't, it's not really clicky. It's not really loud. It's also kind of spongy, but it's, it's a really good, satisfying feeling keyboard. The touchpad is tiny. It's about the width of two fingers, which is tiny. Um, and it's got very nice feeling clicky buttons. There's two stereo speakers up in the top, as well as kind of, it goes up into this bump a little bit. I'm going to tilt the camera up, so I apologize for the noise. And there we go. The screen is, again, a very nice screen. Um, and we have a nice Intel Pentium sticker right there. Now, unfortunately, the battery is dead, so I'm going to have to plug this thing in. And then we can go ahead and test it out. I have... Actually, I did not install anything on this one. Um, it had Windows 98 SE installed, so I just kept that original installation, and it is still there. It has a pretty noisy hard drive, but it's not bad in any way. That's just an error about the uh, CMOS battery being dead, which is okay, so we'll just skip that. Now somebody told me, and I'm actually going to look at this comment right now, on a previous video that I did about these older machines, that um, the type of screen that it had, I don't remember what it was called. It's a special type, not a special type, but an old type of screen um, that has very poor quality and is very bad for, um, for example, moving the mouse around. That's why pointer trails were a thing, so that you could see where your mouse was. Um, the comment here, I just looked at it, says it's a DSTN, or Passive Matrix screen. Um, and this person agrees that yes, they are horrible. So, 
There's the Windows 98 startup sound. And you can see I've got pointer trails on, and this thing looks weird. I know it was just kind of the thing of the time, but man, it looks weird. Um, so this is something I didn't notice before when I was doing this, and I don't think it was an issue, is that there's little lines all through the screen. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I think the screen may actually be on its way out. That's kind of unfortunate. I'll have to play with this a little bit after I do this video. You can probably see it there. There's lines. That was not there before. Oh, you know what? It goes away with the screen movement. Well, I'm probably not going to end up fixing that, but I will make it very clear in the uh, eBay listing, because this is going to be sold on eBay, that this is a problem that this particular laptop has, because I'm sure as hell not going to be able to fix that. It has a 4 gigabyte hard drive. I think it's 4.1 unformatted. That's what it said in the um, original documentation for this. And if we go down and take a look at the system information, we'll see it's Windows 98 First Edition. It's a Pentium, I think at 200 something megahertz, maybe. Might be something less. I don't recall the exact speed. And it's got 16 megs of RAM. Uh, just in case you're interested, the resolution of the screen, I think, is a 600 by 800. Yep, 600 by 800. It looks like we can go higher. Can we go higher? Let's give it a try. And this mouse, the touchpad is pretty bad as well. It's not just the mouse. Uh, no. So it is an 800 by 600 display. That makes sense. And uh, I think that'll just about do it for this one. It's a really cool laptop. I had no idea that Texas Instruments released any laptops under their own name. So this was kind of a, a cool one to come across. And with that, I'm going to end the video here. This will be up on eBay, as I mentioned before. So if you're interested, go take a look. I'll have the link in the video description. And... Uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed my video. I thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.